Bonjour, I'm Veera Chow. The next 20 minutes, we'll talk about um, why should you invest in debt mutual funds? Now, I know some of you might accuse us for talking about debt for uh, a number of times in the last three months, but um, just yesterday, somebody um, alerted me to the fact that in the US, if you invest in uh, fixed deposit, you get rates northwards of 5%. In India, if you invest in fixed deposit, you get rates northwards of 8% as well. So there is an alternative to equities now. The TINA factor is no longer there. And if there's an alternative to equities, how about talking about what's the best way to play that alternative? Are mutual funds a good way to play that alternative, which is fixed income? So that's what we're trying and doing today. Last week, we got you uh, some idea of what are the kind of funds that you should choose for different kind of durations of your savings bank account or the fixed deposits. This time around, we're taking it a step further and trying to attack the, or rather talk about the issue at the very root, and then try and explore it a bit more with two people um, who are both immensely informative about how to look at fixed income and debt mutual funds. Uh, Raghav Ayengar of Axis uh, MF and Amit Bivalkar of Sapien. Gentlemen, both of you, thank you so much for joining in. Really great having you uh, both. And since this uh, small suggestion of sorts of trying to go into the roots was Raghav's, let me start off the conversation with him. Raghav, uh, it's been a while, but good having you. Uh, thank you, Leader. Thank you. Uh, pleasure and, to pleasure and, to be back. No, the pleasure is ours. An average we would be trying to understand that if in the long term, over five years or over three years, equities returns usually average out volatility and if equities give the best returns why should one choose debt mutual funds it's a brilliant question it's something that I've i know it's coming from me no no it's come from the <laughs> it's, i spent the last 20 years of my life trying to answer that question right and i think uh, and I, I must confess in the beginning of the show that i think i've done a very poor job of sort of selling future uh, talking about or getting fixed income into investors uh, mind because uh, i think Unlike equities, where people have now got used to volatility, fixed income also is market link, and fixed income investors are very, very worried about volatility. But uh, I think just to answer your question in a simple point, I think if you have a near term expense, I mean, like four or five years away, and five years is in today's context, is I would call it medium term. It's not really long term. I think equities now, given where we are, I think you have to have a much longer uh, investment time horizon if you really want to play out the volatility. So I think fixed income. First of all, I think needs to be looked at from a three to five year context. And uh, number two, as you know, basic students of economics will tell you, I think both asset classes tend to move quite differently. Uh, and very rarely, I mean, in the last couple of years, it has happened that they've converged, but that's very, very once in a while because of COVID and stuff like that. But most of the times an equity does well, fixed income doesn't do that well, and vice versa. So it's, a, it's, it's like a... You need like a like a two wheeler, right? You need to have both wheels for the scooter to get going. So in that sense, as an investor, you need both parts. You need to have the equity wheel and you need to have the fixed income wheel. It also tends to smoothen out your investment experience uh, because of that. So uh, typically, yes, near term goals, uh, more stability to portfolio, more predictability and a very different asset class, giving you a very different set of outcomes that you would expect from equity. Uh, most certainly. Amit, uh, in your mind, does the current environment, um, maybe the valuations of equities or otherwise, lend itself to necessarily having some bit of fixed income exposure in your portfolio, even if one is largely an equity-oriented investor? Uh, I think this question is not either or needed, but uh, even if you are an equity investor, you should always have a, a debt portfolio uh, because in asset allocation, you should have all asset classes as a mix. And your question on to valuation, uh, a simple math there is that uh, if your market cap to GDP uh, is higher than 100, then clearly over the next two, three years, you get muted. Okay. Uh, market cap to GDP. And uh, therefore, you need to look at debt very seriously even at this point of time. Uh, the sovereign bond. Uh, the government of India is uh, borrowing at 7.3, 7.4%. If you're going to get that kind of a, a return or a YTM on debt uh, with indexation benefit, I think debt definitely warrants a place in the portfolio today. So your dividend yield, 4-5%. Uh, if you flip the P and compare it with uh, the YTM, 
then if pe is at 14 that means the yield on the portfolio is uh, 7 while the government of security is at 7% so uh, definitely debt uh, is something which you need to look at uh, very uh, carefully now and you should warrant a place in the portfolio okay now viewers uh, amit assuming that viewers are buying that argument as well what's the best way to play this fixed income and since this is a mutual fund show uh, let's try and keep the bent towards how to use mutual funds to to walk the talk that you are talking uh, typically in debt uh, i would like to compare it with say a uh, fixed deposit for a particular individual and when you look at uh, fixed deposit we always try to look at post tax returns which a fixed deposit can offer compared to a mutual fund now mutual funds have a unique uh, feature where you can get an indexation benefit if you stay for 3 years plus the biggest benefit according to me is that uh, predictability is something what you get in fixed deposits and mutual fund but here if you have put say 5 lakh rupees in a mutual fund and the requirement is 50000 rupees you can always withdraw that 50000 rupees and the 4 and a half lakh can stay earning the yield on the portfolio while in a fixed deposit if you have put in a 5 lakh rupee fixed deposit and you require 50000 you need to break the entire fixed deposit and you have a penalty interest on that so predictability is one second is liquidity and third is the biggest advantage is the indexation what mutual funds can offer so i think those are three things one should keep in mind never ever uh, have a, a mismatch of duration which means that if you require money in 6 months do not put your money in a 3 or a 5 year maturity mutual fund yeah. product if you have money for 5 years do not put it in a liquid fund so as they do it in banks they call it asset liability matching Similarly, in case of uh, individuals, you need to do an asset liability matching, wherein your maturity and the fund's maturity, if you can get that right, I think you can get decent returns in debt mutual funds. Hmm. Raghav, uh, same question to you, actually. No, no, I, I mean, Amit uh, sort of struck it out completely out of the park. So there's very little I can add there. It's just that the other thing people tend to miss out is a uh, sort of deferment of your tax or your income. So, you know, people tend to, unlike other fixed income instruments where you get a regular coupon and you pay that tax every time you receive that coupon, here essentially whatever returns the fund is making in the form of interest actually keeps getting added to the NAV. So you can just, until you really need it, you can just keep it and you pay tax on whatever amount you actually take out. So apart from the indexation, which is a very, very big benefit, the deferment of your taxes are fantastic. And uh, yeah, the flexibility is absolutely great. Plus today, I think the, the biggest mistake that I think uh, investors have made, and I think I'm glad people like Amit have brought it right up and center, is that people go by past returns like every other product needed. Obviously, in a falling interest rate scenario, the one who has the highest duration maturity tends to look good. So people tend to put money into that without realizing, hey, that, that fund is taken and got a much longer duration. And then when they get a negative return, they tend to blame the, the, the partner or the the advisor or the mutual fund or whatever it is. So I think the biggest risk in mutual funds today is to get this your money duration matched to the duration of the portfolio. If you can do that, I think you're more or less sorted in life. And viewers, this takes back us back to a bunch of conversations that people have had in the last six months about you know target maturity funds and how you should match your uh when you need money, then the fund ka duration Remember, that's the kind of conversation that we've had. So keep that at the back of your mind when you're doing this. Now, um, uh, Raghav, you, you are fairly young, but let's assume you had a 25-year-old son. Uh, I do, by the way. <laughs> okay, brilliant. <laughs> you're, you're still young. Uh, he's but. not yet 25, but yeah, he's getting there. <laughs> but okay. thanks for the compliment, Neeraj. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. So for your son, you know, the reason yeah. I mentioned this is because um, age would play a very big role in what's the quantum of debt allocation, right? So northwards yeah. of... Uh, 40 northwards of 50 you automatically even if you don't want you should ideally have uh you know debt allocation i take i buy amit's point that everybody should have some bit of debt but let's assume for a very young person that need not necessarily be the be all and end all my question is uh, what's the quantum of debt mutual funds in an overall portfolio would you reckon is apt for people who are let's say sub 40 or sub 30 as the case may be 
No, it's it's again it's very need based, Neeraj. You can't give just a one size fits all here. So obviously the yeah, but the because fa- we can't answer everybody. The, fa- yeah, no, no, the fashionable the fashionable thing to say is 60, 40, 60, goodie, 40, dead. Right, that's the fashionable thing. If you go and read, uh, you know, lots of financial planning journals, that's what you will get. But the fact is that if somebody's got a need, and again, I go back to my first point, somebody's got an expense in the near term, please put all that money into fixed income. I mean, don't take a call, especially today, and try to be smart and put money into equity, right? So it's, it could be as basic as, hey, my daughter's going to college next year, so I would need to pay money for her her graduation maybe in 23 April, right? And I ideally, I should be taking out money now and putting it into a fixed income fund right now. And ideally, like Amit said, something with a three, six, nine month kind of a duration, because that's exactly when I need the money, right? And uh, that money should be kept aside for that. Your emergency corpus has to be kept in a debt fund. There is no way you can keep it in an equity fund because you don't know when an emergency strikes and you don't know what will happen. What's the state of equity markets at that point of time? So it's it's, it's reasonably individualistic. And that's where I think, you know, having, you know, possibly people like Sapit on the show helps because I think they can sort of customize their... Uh, I won't say advice, but customize the answers of it. But anything which has near term uh, sort of uh, financial requirement, please put that money into debt immediately. Because the as as you know, the returns are much more predictable, you get a smoother ride. And today it's uh, it's it's basically T plus one, right? You can take your money out with a day's notice today. So you give me a redemption today before three tomorrow morning. If all, if your transaction is smooth, it goes into your bank account. So it's as good as that. So emergency funds, near term expenditure. Immediate expenditure, which you know, uh, uh, if it's something which is coming up in the next two, three years, and obviously, so it's. I think you have to think like a corporate in this case. You know, corporates uh-huh. also do exactly this. Uh, you know, if they have money, for example, I have corporates I know who need money in March in to pay out uh, maybe some royalties. That money is parked into a three, six month kind of a product. I know a corporate uh-huh. who pays dividend in July, so that money is parked already into a one year product. Uh, in fact, uh, just to add, there are a lot of our clients who do SIPs for paying the annual premium of LIC. So they keep money in a money market fund through SIP and they withdraw when they want to pay the LIC premiums or their car premiums or their medical insurance premiums. So uh, you can use debt as a, a accumulator for an expense which you know is going to hit you in the next 3, 6, 12 months. So not only as allocation, but also for efficient use of your money, uh, you can use debt as a product. And there, uh, how you to do that? No... How to do that? Give it, give us the options. So uh, if you have a, a six month view, I think liquid funds today will be the ideal option for you to go and park your money. If you have a twelve month view and you want uh, next Diwali, you want to plan a vacation, then clearly a money market fund will suit your need. If you have something which is coming up after three years or five years, I think uh, maybe a banking PSU kind of fund will help you uh, meet your goals. Uh, And if you have really long term uh, view, then clearly there are roll down funds which uh, talk of 25 years, 20 years, constant maturity guild funds. If you have that long view, then almost all these uh, 10 year, 15 year funds will give you a better post tax return compared to anything in debt available in the market. So uh, I think you need to list down what is the requirement and when the requirement is. And accordingly, there is a product which is created by people like Raghav and others. You have every product which will match the duration and the requirement. As you see, there is a you scratch my back, I scratch yours policy between Raghav and Amit. I'm waiting for the two of them to even do that to me, by the way, before the end of the show. So let's wait and see if that happens. Yeah, but, but jokes aside, yeah. Uh, uh, Amit, and then, then the same question to Raga. What are the what are the risks to return? There is never a risk to absolute return, but a risk to the desired return or the envisaged return that people would have in fixed income products as we stand currently. What are the risks there? Amit, you first, and then I'll go to Raga on this. Uh, I think any any debt product uh, has three main uh, risks attached to it. One is that of the interest rate risk. So uh, higher the duration or the maturity of the portfolio, you will see volatility because of interest rate movements. That is number one. The second one, uh, Neeraj, is liquidity risk, wherein uh, if there is a run on a fund, and we have seen that in uh, April of 19 with the fund house, so if you have a run on a fund and he is yeah. not able to sell his portfolio because it's not liquid, 
then you can see problems uh, in those funds and the third one is the credit risk wherein uh, where am i investing what kind of quality companies am i lending my money to so if you have interest rate risk liquidity risk and credit risk covered i think uh, you will not find any more uh, risks into debt funds uh, debt funds are alternative to your uh, fixed deposits hence we should not try to maximize return out of debt funds but you have to optimize on a post tax basis compared to your fixed deposit and that is what people need to remember most of the times people look at uh, the rear view mirror and see that yield fund have delivered better returns so let us put the money now i think we should not make that mistake look at the yields which are printed on the fact sheets of every mutual fund look at the maturity and accordingly decide your maturity and the fund's maturity that's the easiest way to do yeah that's a pertinent advice to raghav i was also trying to get so one is of course the risks that are usually prevalent trying to understand what are the risks to your mind currently from a fixed income investing perspective as things stand interest rates being where they are or however the assumptions may be at access what are the risks currently prevailing i think we have one large risk which is inflation because inflation tends to spike interest rates up right and inflation unfortunately a lot of india's inflation is imported so very difficult to sort of put up number on it uh, that's largely because of oil and gold right so any call that you take on fixed income has to be a bit uh, you have to look at oil prices you have to look at gold prices you have to see a bit of the external environment because we do import inflation because 80% of our uh, consumption needs for oil comes from abroad right so but as of now things seem to be quite benign uh, you know i think the world is slowing down much faster than expected uh, there was obviously the the risk of uh, the us doing far more rate hikes than what it is the us is the the global money supplier today so whatever the us federal bank does will have an impact all over the world my sense is in india it will be a bit less muted because we are largely a domestic economy even today so in that sense we are in a bit of a sweet spot i think the chal- the pain of fixed income has already to some extent passed i think we've had a crazy period over the last 6 months where interest rates have gone up in some categories by almost 2.5% 3% and i'm sure many of your viewers are seeing that on their emis today right i think emis which used to be sub 7 have now crossed 8 comfortably right now in fact trending more towards 9 uh, but given all this i think today uh, i think fixed income is in actually a quite a sweet spot because my our sense is that the worst is behind us and uh, like amit pointed out if you're getting 7.5% on a government security which is the epitome of safety in india i think it's it's a, it's too good to be true at this point of time so i think one should look at fixed income and you remember neeraj last year at this time we were we spent a large part of our time talking about hybrid funds and they've done quite yes. well for the investor so i think that's the reason why at least i'm thumping my, the table and saying that hey you need to put more money into fixed income i think the biggest risk for an investor is to make sure that he's matching his or her investment horizon with the with the duration of the fund i think that's that's very critical don't get carried away by past performance right now i think people are getting carried away negatively because past performance is quite bad if you look at any spreadsheet returns are 2 3 4% so people say i get much better returns in other things but i think that's backward looking i think you have to take a forward looking view my sense is the smart investors have already started coming in the last couple of months we've seen a lot of fresh inflow starting to come in and i think uh, thanks to things like your show i think hopefully more people will come in. Finally, it came for me as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think here one point. Uh, what mm-hmm. I would like to add is not only crude and gold, but uh, today you look at any person. Like if we look at you, Raga, me, whatever we are wearing, are all international brands which are actually imported. Nothing is made in India. Uh, a- Apple phone, or maybe it's a tie, or it's your spectacles, or whatever. and every time we see that consumption moving up in india forget about crude and gold we are actually getting dollars to go out of the country for importing these goods and the more and more consumption actually goes up you will see more and more imports which will have inflation in india and which will put pressure on your interest rates so okay. therefore it is very much critical to have a look at that as well by the way shameless personal plug every piece of article that i buy online i do a control f for a country of origin and i try and maximize it at india uh, 
you know, just just wanted to lay that point out. And I'm very happy, by the way, Amit, that a bunch of phones are now starting to get made in India. I mean, hopefully in about 12 months time, we'll reach a point of time when even the iPhone 15, when it launches, may be made in India. So cross fingers for that. <laughs> but no, it's it's a it's a pertinent point on viewers. I think that the the message behind what Amit was trying to say is very very important, and I hope um, you you kind of take that. Now, Raghav, may I ask you how do you? I mean, you know how how does and maybe this is a question better asked to Amit. But Raghav, I want to start with you, which is um, multitude of fund houses offering almost synonymous products. How do you differentiate? How does a there's an investor out there who wants to know how does she choose? Which one house to find? I am actually personally quite lucky, uh, Neeraj, because I work for Axis, right? So there is an Axis bank brand behind me, which is very, very well known in the investment or in the investing community yeah. or in in the community at large. So that's that's I'm lucky to have that because I think people naturally gravitate to things that they trust, and I think Axis is a very trusted brand, especially because it's it's a bank, right? So you, yeah. you it's, it's an extremely visible financial institution. So that's an inherent advantage that I have. But the other way to look at it is I think also like I keep talking about, uh, you know, we used to keep chatting about this during our equity shows. And I think you have to look at consistency of performance over a period of time. Uh, very easy for anybody to make money when interest rates actually coming down. You just pick the highest duration that the scheme can get into and get there. But I think the interesting times is to try and figure out uh, how the fund does when actually things start going backward. And uh, again, there I think in that space, access is done well. We have a short-term bond fund. We have a banking PSU fund, which are pretty much leaders in their pack in terms of protecting returns. Like Amit said, this is not a game of where you're trying to hit the ball, every ball for a six. I think it's important that you, the fixed income game is a lot about singles. And I think you keep making a little more money because of the indexation benefit and because of the subdued taxation. Actually, that what, that's what gives you your delta in performance, post-tax performance over many other fixed income instruments. So I think since we've got that advantage, then I think you one should not be very adventurous on the other side. Okay. Like, uh, so I think many people ask me, do I buy a credit risk fund, short term bond fund? I said, frankly, I don't think so. Credit risk fund is a is a great place to be in, provided you understand what you're buying. Mm -hmm. I mean, earlier people used to have this standard formula, YTM minus expense is what you will get. I think that's not the right way to look at it. I think you need to be a little more, uh, you need to understand the portfolio a little more, ask a few more questions because you're effectively lending money to those people. Uh, so if you're confused about it, give money to a high quality fund, banking PSU, short term space, and just just let them let the let the fund manager and your and your and your advisor, your distributor do their jobs. Yeah. So that's it. Okay. I mean, how do you do that? Pick up the fund house because the products are synonymous, so to say. I think uh, one important factor is uh, is the fund true to label? Uh, what they are actually saying and are they following uh, that? Uh, SEBI has put out a uh, nine three by three box for uh, categorization of um, debt funds when it comes to credit risk and when it comes to duration. Uh, I think that box is pretty clear in terms of uh, high credit or low credit and maturity, high maturity or low maturity. Every fund house publishes that in their fact sheet. If you want clearly high credit funds and if you want uh, low maturity, you can easily pick one from all the fund houses which are there. Uh, available today very easy exercise but more importantly as i said debt is not a place to maximize your return debt is more as providing a safety net to your portfolio and debt also one important aspect uh, neeraj is that many people need a monthly income or a quarterly income or a yearly income the biggest advantage here is that when you redeem the appreciation in a debt fund it gets taxed on a fifo basis first in first out basis so when you redeem suppose you have invested 100 rupees and the fund has delivered 8% in a year as an example and you redeem 8 rupees then you are charged uh, income tax according to fifo basis if you effectively calculate the income tax on that that works out to 3 to 4% only so if you do a swp in a debt fund say at 5% uh, and you put money in a uh, say short term fund for 10 years and you do a 5% SWP, your tax incidence on that 5% is only 2 to 3% and not 30% as you do. So debt fund has this unique feature of uh, FIFO taxation on withdrawals and I think that is something which people have not explored. SIP 
has become uh, more like uh, a roadside uh, a product where everybody is talking about SIP. I think SWP, there is a lot of work for the industry to do because there are a lot of elders and a lot of people who require money on a monthly basis. Uh, choosing the right product and doing the right amount of SWP, taxation-wise also, it helps you in the long run. Amit Bivalkar, this calls for a show at the start of 2023. Uh, let's do yeah. one, all right? Yeah. But just, just before we wrap, uh, I had to because we're running out of time now, but just before we wrap, a quick 30-second answer from both of you. Uh, both of you mentioned uh, a need of an emergency fund, right? Now, there are multiple debt market products, I'm not, but emergency and barish kabhi bhi aa sakti hai, and we don't know when it will end or when it will be needed. So my question, therefore, is what is the best way or what is the best product within the mutual fund space to invest into for an emergency fund, knowing fully well that I don't know when will I need the money? Amit, to you first. Yeah, Barish ka apne kaha to predicting rain is not important. Neeraj carrying an umbrella is. So, and that is what debt funds do. So, if you have any money which is more than one month, uh, then you need to put it in a, a money market fund. If you have money which is less than one month requirement, you need to go straight in a liquid fund. Uh, why money market fund? Because you are currently at 6%, 6.5% YT. But I mean, sorry, it's an emergency. I don't know whether I'll need it in one month or not. Exactly. So you will have that kind of money always there in your bank because emergency, you can have a credit card which you can use for one month as a roller uh, and I then see. use this money. So uh, that kind of money, I mean, you will not put a 50 lakhs in an emergency fund, right? You will probably put uh, 2 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 6 months of your salary, something which is your emergency fund. And uh, therefore, any money which is one to three months plus should go in a money market. While otherwise, you stay in a liquid fund and that money can stay there forever. As your salary grows, as your corpus grows, remember the percentile should go up. Otherwise, your corpus might be five crores and you will be at one lakh in the emergency fund. That will not help you. Perfect. Raghav, is your answer any no, different? No, and it well could be. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely there. Just keep topping up your emergency corpus. I think we discovered that many people discovered that to their disadvantage during the COVID time because I think they got into the habit, but they didn't top up. Uh, that's where I think watching things like your show are important because that five minutes is a good takeaway, basically. So if you can do that, nothing like it. I put a little bit of personally, I have a little bit of money of uh, my emergency fund and banking PSU fund. Uh, that's because I have three, six month liquidity. I, so anything, anything beyond six months, I keep about 12 months of uh, emergency cash flow out because of my personal issues. So the first six months is largely like Amit said in a money market fund. Uh, but the, the remaining six months is actually in a in a banking PSU kind of a fund, right? Or a short term. Yeah. Great. Gentlemen, this was extremely fruitful to do this uh, half an hour chat with you, both of you. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Raghav, of course, we'll see you very, very soon with uh, some more uh, work. And Amit, uh, you have you, uh, a lot since I'm doing a lot of Hindi shows as well. So we'll do a thing around SWPs and the right usage in a better tax efficient manner sometime at the beginning of 2023 if you have the time. Sure, why not? Super, great. Thank you both of you and viewers. Thanks Thank for tuning into this leg of the Mutual Fund Show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.